Superman uh, straighten up like that. Start at outer stop. Stop at outer stop. Stop at outer repeat and stop, sir. All right for the clearing, man. Stop at outer confirm stop, One five zero is next heading, sir. Where's that bloody flag? Loud and clear, Hammy. Stand by 15 seconds. Are we quite happy? Yes, sir. Both inners slow ahead. Both inners are slow Stand by. Six. Port inner repeater slow ahead, sir. Starboard inner. Slow ahead. We start using the turn, sir. Next ships. Yes. Port back to the south. Stand by 10 seconds. Starboard 25. Starboard 25. 10 meters of decreasing. Superman, I'm turning to 169. Uh, 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 that looks yeah. good to me. Yes, sir. The moment. Coming around well. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we've cut the corner a good we deal. Midships, yeah. yeah. please stop the port inner, please, sir. Yeah. Port inner, stop. Port inner, repeated, stop, sir. Port inner, confirmed, stop, sir. Just coming out to the next reload position to port, sir. We're, right, we're just in the narrows now. We're coming back <laughs> onto track. Uh, we'll be turning to port next round the Vanguard board. Well, we have the usual family team on the port side here waving the Union Jack. Yeah. Just coming up to the reloading position, sir. No tide here, sir. Good. Just a slight uh, wind on there, Mason. Look at those are let me know when the port in her is going, half a stern. Yeah. Confirm when the port yeah. inner is half a stern. Yes, it is. Port inner, revolutions 8 0. Port inner, revolutions 8 0. Port inner, revolutions 8 0. Sir? Yeah. We've got Starboard a vacuum, sir. Stop. Starboard in, stop. We've got a vacuum pump, sir, on the port in We're going 3 0 astern at the moment. Right. Oh, that, the port in is only going 3 0 revs. We're better take way off uh, using the starboard. Yeah. yeah. Getting to flag here, so to watch the transit. Uh, Lincoln, this is Kent. Uh, we intend to keep well to the west of you. Thanks, Trevor. I should just chuck it in the cabin. The next wheelover is a slow wheelover to starboard to 250. So. Very murky, yeah, isn't it? Certainly not more than three miles of visibility. Yeah, you see, we have you know, this engine not working at all. Right. That made an extra difference. And then every other damn thing sort of back to front not working properly, so uh, not very good. Yeah, you see that thing there is showing the engine's going astern, whereas in fact it's going ahead. This one is also showing it's going astern when it's going ahead, so there was only the one properly, and then that one wasn't working down to the engine, so altogether. East to 15. We had a, <laughs> a pretty hairy kind of business. One, one, you see, the one gyro not working either. But uh, what I'm saying is that unless the only way to get these things working is to go to sea, you know, and get them working once you're at sea. If you sit in harbour waiting for them, you can wait for ages. Beetle.
Now then, young man, I was in my office here this morning when you walked in, having been released from the cells where you've been placed for your own safety because you returned on board drunk. That's correct, sir. Yes. If you could have seen the state of yourself this morning, my son, you wouldn't be stood here like you are now. Yes, what happened to your trousers? Well, I don't know, to be honest, like, so I can... I... Well, what are you doing walking around with no trousers on, like? Well, they're too wet to put on, like, so Oh, I too... see. <laughs> now then, where's your money? Sir. Um, ah, uh, uh, I, I don't know, sir, I remember. Well, I've got in the pocket, so I don't know where it is now. What rating are you? It's just since George, sir. You're still drunk now, aren't you, really? How much money did you go ashore with? Uh, ten pounds. And how much have you got left? I should have about £4 left, sir. Do you want... You should have £4 left. Well, I'll tell you, my sunshine, you've got five pence. So it's an expensive run ashore, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Hey? Somebody would be proud of you, my son, wouldn't they? Hey? Yes, sir. Very proud of you, all right. Right. And what have you got these marks on your face with? I don't know, sir. You don't know? Take it around the sick bay. Let them have a look at him. A state to get it. I don't know what Mum would say to you, my old flower, but I've got a good idea, and I know what Dad would say. Well, it's one of the facts of life, my son. You drink a man's drink, and you act like a man. It's as simple as that. Oh, yes, sir. You'll be charged with being drunk when you return on board, and you will have to see the commander. I will investigate this case only. If I find there is a case to answer, I should pass you off for trial by higher authority. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Uh, read warning one. You're a seaman, executive. We're there like a bloody great big party. You have air like a bird in future, my cocker, and I'll send you and get you a bloody permit. You can go ashore in airnet. But you are not coming aboard my war canoe with air like that. All right? You will get it cut and it will stay cut. He said... Uh, give us your ID card. This was Constable Williams, was it? Yes. yes sir. Give us your ID card. To which I replied, no. And I gave him my uh, rate and number and name. And uh, that was all. And your replies to them, um, when he told the you that the facts would be reported, are substantially correct? You did say, uh, arseholes to you lot? Well, at the time, sir, I was uh, mm. fuming. And I, uh, I don't really remember now exactly uh, the words I, I spoke, but it could be correct. First person, I feel there is a case to answer, right? And because there is a case to answer, I should pass you off to the commander, right, for a summary trial. Yeah. Right, commander's report. Well, if you were fed up, you was got a problem or anything, why don't you tell somebody about it? There's no really problems this been on here. You know as well as I do, you improperly leave the ship and somebody else has got to do your duty, haven't they? Yes, the next thing is, you're in trouble. You're a good lad, you haven't been in trouble for a long time. Why go and spoil it? Because it's the last night in. Plus the fact that one of your messmates has got to keep your duty for you, hasn't they? They've got to keep your watch for you. See? Yeah. Eh? Well, there it is, young McLaughlin. You'll have to see the officer of the day and uh, subsequently see the commander. All right? Go on, off you go, wait outside. Something like 1,400 half royals went ashore that night, knowing the ship was sailing the next morning, and all of them made it back to the ship on time and before the ship sailed, except you. Which caused a great deal of trouble to a lot of other people, quite apart from anything else. The one thing you must not do is miss your ship on sailing. You were very lucky. 
that we had the helicopter going in shore to land the pilot, which was able to bring you off. Otherwise, it would have been a long time before you rejoined your proper ship, and that would have cost you a lot of money. I want no more of this from you, Butcher. Clear? All right, keep up the good work around the ship, but you've got to get a grip on this leave-breaking business, all right? Four days pay forfeited, ten days number nines. Four days pay forfeited, for ten days number nines on cap. Left turn and left wheel quick march. Now I'm on Kelly. Off uh, cap on the 4th of February, sir, was drunk when he returned on board a Majesty's ship out royal from leave at 22.50. Do you understand the charge? Yes, sir. How do you plead? Guilty, sir. Please plead guilty, sir. Right, what do we know of Kelly's behaviour when he returned on board? He was quiet, sir. No problem, gave no, uh, no concern to anybody. Mm. Very unsteady on his feet, sir. And um, usual symptoms of drunkenness. Okay. How much did you have, Kelly? Quite a bit, sir. What, what's in your judgment is quite a bit? About nine pounds, sir. <coughs> Cider, sir. Scrumpy. Yes, sir. What can you tell me about Kelly, uh, Sir Mendelssohn? He's been on board about three months, sir, and uh, the last couple of months he's worked as a messman. He's been a very steady man during this time, well-behaved, polite, hard-working, no problems. I would like to point out that Although he admits he was drunk, he was quiet. He caused no problems when he came off. Well, at least is that in your favour, Kelly. What was the occasion for the party? Just the last night, sir. Just the last night. OK. Well, at least you were quiet and you didn't, ashore, as far as I know, bring Ark Royal into disrepute. Write it down to experience, but make sure you learn by the experience because on this deployment there are going to be quite a few last nights before we yes, sail and I don't want you coming back smashed from any more of them, all right? Yes, sir. Nine pints of scrumpy is obviously too much. You've got to know when to stop, Kelly, or you'll get yourself into trouble and will annoy me. Five days, number nines, and of course be a stop for a month. Left turn, left wheel quick march. McLaughlin. Sir. <coughs> Off for cap. I'm here, Mom McLaughlin. Said it improperly leave a Majesty Ship Ark Royal at 2100 on the 4th of February 1976 to 0230 on the 5th of February 1976, thereby absenting himself without leave five hours and 30 minutes. Do you understand the charge? Yes, sir. Right, McLaughlin. I will investigate this case only. If I find there's a case to answer, I shall pass you on for trial to higher authority. You don't have to plead at this stage, but you may do so if you wish. Do you want to plead? Yes, sir. How do you wish to plead? Get it, sir. Thank you. McLaughlin had the last dog watch on the date in question. Subsequently, he had the middle watch, which he was adrift for. The chief of the watch, MEA Hunt, sent somebody to check where he was, but this wasn't until 0230. At that time, he was not in the mess. But subsequent investigations by leading regulator Thorpe, McLaughlin admitted that he had gone ashore between the times stated in the charge. So he had nothing to say at my table. I placed him on your report. As far as mitigation is concerned, McLaughlin, do you wish to speak for yourself or do you want Lieutenant Crellin to speak for you? Lieutenant Crellin, sir. Is there anything you wish to say in mitigation at this stage? Not at this stage, sir. Very good. Captain's report. Report on the cap. Left at turn. Left for a quick march. Anyone else at Preston? 